and welcome to another edition of Man Club. Today I'm really excited because I got a delivery from the UPS guy just a couple hours ago. And uh, lo and behold, I've got my Takeda SRI system uh, to fit in here in my V6 uh, Honda 3.5 liter. And uh, I got it for an unbelievable deal. I got it for $115.99 shipped from uh, carparts.com. I gotta think that's a fluke because everywhere else I looked, it was the, the cheapest I could find it was $230 to $250. Some places as high as $279.99. So I'm really fired up. I just got it. It's about 8 o'clock at night, but hell, let's put it in there because I want to see how this thing uh, sounds. Let's get going. All right, here's a quick preview of all the tools that uh, we're going to use today. Uh, we got needle nose pliers. Just, that's just to help with the uh, hose clamps. Wire cutters, you know, well, there's a couple of places where the wire is uh, tied to the motor or tied to mounts that we're going to remove. We got a four out, uh, four millimeter hex key. That's to put the filter bracket on. I used a zip tie to uh, zip tie one of the lines into the new intake. A uh, really nice um, flat and uh, Phillips screwdriver. Got a small socket with a deep well, 10 millimeter and a short. I just used the 10 uh, deep the whole time. Vice grips again for the uh, hose clamps and a uh, utility knife is always handy. Uh, this is pretty much the basic tools that we're going to need for today. Alright, so here's an overall look of the uh, engine. And what we're going to be doing today pretty much is uh, removing this piece here and uh, putting in our new Takeda SRI. Uh, we're going to get started here and grab our 10 min uh, millimeter socket. We're going to take this up, uh, go ahead and disconnect the battery. And I'm thinking we're just going to pull the whole thing out just because it'll make it easier to access everything. One thing I want to show you here is um, this cage for the battery. You don't really have to take these nuts all the way off because they're, they're basically a long shape like a J. So you can just get them loose and kind of fish them out and, and turn them sideways and then this whole piece will come out like that. So, And uh, it'll make it a little easier to go back in. Okay, next we're going to take our 10 millimeter, or we can just get a flat, I mean a Phillips head screwdriver. Loosen this clamp here, which connects the uh, tube here to the throttle body. And then we're going to pop this uh, this line off right here. It's just got a little squeeze clamp, and we can just get that off by hand and pull this tube out. Alright, this tube, it was pretty far in there, and it was it didn't want to come out too easy. So, since I have one pair of hands... I used a vice grip to hold the uh, clamp and then I just really got in there and tugged on it. You have to get a little leverage on that one, but that one popped off. So next we got these four screws here, here, there's one back here, and one here. And this is your mass uh, airflow sensor, so we want to go ahead and disconnect that and we're going to pull this whole piece out. Okay, we almost got it out, but there's a uh, one little thing I forgot to mention, or see. There's a little... Uh, wire tie holding the uh, connector for the mass uh, flow air sensor there. We're just basically going to cut this right here. Just be real careful not to cut the wires. Alright, we got the uh, we got the wire retainer trim there. Now we've got this box here. I took the filter out. It wasn't too bad, but it, it's about ready to be replaced. So up here we have this little rubber grommet thing. I think we just we just pull that and come off and then we get our 10 millimeter again and we're going to pull this nut out right here and this this box should come out. All right, I've got this nut loose here and the final thing is this rack that holds the positive battery cable. You just you just pull up on it. And that'll come loose. And it looks like there's one more hose clamp on the side right here and this whole box should come out. Inside the kit, they've provided two lines here, this smaller diameter and this larger diameter. And uh, apparently what's going to happen here is we're going to take out this entire metal rail, and they're bonded together, these two pieces here. Um, we're going to take it off right here. And you really can't see the other one. It's going to be the tricky one. It's underneath the uh, throttle body. And uh, we're going to run all flex line and get rid of this whole piece. So I'll show you what it looks like when we pull it out. Okay, that's probably the hardest part of this whole ordeal right there. We pull this whole piece out here. Um, this piece was pretty easy. That was right underneath the uh, 
MAF. This part came off easy. This um, larger hose here, it was real tough to get off. What I wound up doing is just, I don't know if you can see that, I wound up using a, a blade and cutting it and uh, vice grips here and a flat tip and just pushed on it. But the real pain was down underneath the MAF, this little extension here. I wound up taking it off here first and then this clamp was just turned around so it was real hard to get to. I used a pair of needle nose pliers to get to that and came in underneath. So that's probably the trickiest part of this whole thing, but persistence pays, man. Now when you pull that line out, it's gonna leak a little bit. Here's a different view of it. I'm reaching behind the MAF. You can see my finger down here. This is the hard one to get to. So this is the coolant line. So we're gonna basically take our little provided hose that they gave us and we're gonna reuse the clamps from the other ones. So you can see I already put them on. So we're gonna slide it in under there attach it here see my finger wiggling and then it comes around and attaches right underneath here all right so we got it back on here you can see it's here and it loops around plugs in way underneath underneath there right there and uh, yeah that's definitely the funnest part of this project right there getting that old hose off and this new one on all right, just when you're uh, getting a little hot and bothered working on this stuff, the fun part begins. Um, we're finally at the assembly point, so what we're going to do, we're going to take off the sensor here. There's two screws here, and we're going to put it right here. All right, so they did get a little tricky on us. We didn't wind up using the original screws from here. They have a couple of flat tip screws in the... Uh, bags so pull those out and use those all right following along with the instructions here we've got this little rubber mount once uh threaded ends on either side one end goes into here and uh that looks like our mounting point so get that all ready to go all right so we're going to take our mount here you can see the side the flat sides on here and uh we're going to put we're going to mount it up with the uh, filter mount you can see the the where the screws go in the threaded part. So you know, I also put the uh, rubber edging already on here, and uh, you want to make sure when you put this on that the big side or the filter side is on the inside of this uh, curve like that. See how that is? Because the mount is going to be like that, and filter will be on the right hand side. All right, next we're going to, I got my rag out because we need to keep our area clean. This is the side of the, of the uh, intake is going to go to the motor, so we don't want to get any, you know, crap in here. So we need to keep this clean. What we're going to do is we're going to get the, uh, the clamp that came with the filter, drop that on. Make sure everything looks clean in there. Because they come, they come kind of oiled or something, so, so it doesn't dry out, but uh, it really, dirt really sticks to it, so and put the filter on make sure we get our um, clamp in the groove which you can see mine is clearly not because I'm doing this one-handed here's the groove there put our clamp in there and we're gonna tighten it down don't do not over tighten it just get it nice and snug um, just when it starts to feel like you need to start really cranking on it that's when you stop okay you can see I've got the filter mounted now and uh, when you put your clamp on, you really need to think about the orientation of this thing. You can see at the bottom, that's the mounting point. So it's basically going to be sitting like this. So you want your clamp to be somewhere that's going to be accessible in the future because at some point you have to take this thing off and clean it. And if it's up underneath, then you're going to wind up having to take the whole thing apart. You don't want to do that. So think ahead. Go ahead and move your clamp somewhere convenient now. Oh, wow. 